Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. With Christmas being literally right around the corner, I thought it was time that I post some tutorials with some Christmas colors. So for this cake, I chose to do gold and Christmas red. And I did two different versions of this cake. One of them included some wafer paper accents. So if this seems interesting to you, stick around. We'll get right to it. I bought these silicone molds for another cake that um, I have not posted yet. I wanted to make some chocolate and I wanted it to have the shattered effect. And when I saw it and I used it, I thought, you know what, that might look really good with some fondant on cake. So for this one, I'm gonna try that. Now, I've gotta say that I'm not 100% sold on the effect that I got because this mold has some very distinct edges on it and I kind of wish I had gone about it in a different way to blend in those lines a little bit better but it did it did turn out pretty so anyway to describe what I'm doing here I went ahead and I rolled out this kind of tan colored fondant and I wanted to measure it the size of the mold so that it would fit in there just snugly like you see there and I just made sure that I pressed that fondant in there to get all of those details. And I just set it to the side while I prepared this top tier. This cake, I did use a foam dummy for the top, and this is a very well used foam dummy, as you can see, but it is not meant to be, um, I didn't make it to be sold to anybody. If I did, I would have gotten a brand new foam dummy for them, but I had this on hand, so I wanted to use it. So what I did there is I actually rolled out some more of that fondant, that tan colored fondant, and I laid it on the top. And I had also coated the foam with some shortening and that's what makes the fondant stick there. And just laid it on the top and cut the excess off. Now I am putting the panels, we'll call them panels, of the um, shattered look around the edges. Now you'll see here, this is where I'm having some issues. Well, the first issue was that top was too thick. So I took that off and I'm gonna roll it a little thinner. But I'm here, I'm showing you, I had a little difficulty getting those pieces to blend in together. And there I was just rolling that top piece a little thinner. Um, yeah, so I'm having a little hard time getting these pieces to blend together so you don't see those sharp edges. I was trying to kind of manipulate it so that they had kind of a smoother, softer tra um, transition from one piece to the other. And once you get that gold on it, you're not gonna notice those edges as bad. But I kinda wish I had kinda laid one piece of fondant on top of the other where they meet and cut just a random edge through both pieces so that when you piece them together, like a puzzle, you didn't get those sharp edges. But you know, lesson learned. As you guys know if you've seen my other videos, um, when I make mistakes, I, I admit to it and that way you can learn from my mistakes. So anyway, Go ahead and get those pieces as mixed or uh, blended in together as you can and let that set aside so that it can firm up a little bit before I do the gold. And I wanted to make some gold spheres so I went ahead and I melted some yellow candy melts and I am just placing those inside my silicone sphere mold. Now you will notice that I'm using tan and I'm using yellow on pieces that I'm going to be coloring gold. And the lesson there is that as long as you're using either a tan, a brown, or a gold, you're going to get basically the same color in the end when you put the gold on top. So I'm going to let those chill in the refrigerator. And in the meantime, I am putting my final coat of buttercream on this bottom tier. And this bottom tier was all butter or um, all cake. No foam on this one. And just go ahead and remove the excess off the top once you get the size smooth. Put that in the refrigerator for 10 minutes, or I'm sorry, 20 minutes, or the freezer for 10 minutes while you prepare your gold spheres. Now I use some gold luster dust and I just put them in a bowl and I leave this in that bowl so that I can use it when I want to. I don't throw it out. And I have some gold draw jays that I use to coat things that I need gold that I don't want to actually have to paint gold. And what that does is when you put your gold chocolate sphere inside this baggie, and you kind of shake it up since there's gold luster dust in it. The combination of the draw jays and the gold luster dust give a really, really nice coating of gold on these spheres. And I went ahead and did that same thing on these larger gold draw jays because I wanted the golds to be a little bit more matchy. 
And now we are going to prepare the top with to accept the gold accepted. <laughs> I'm just using some shortening and I'm brushing it on, getting it into all those nooks and crannies. And then I'm using a big fluffy brush. This is just, it's a makeup brush, yes, but it's just for cakes. Never used it on my face, I promise. And uh, dip it in your gold luster dust and you just kind of brush it on. And that shortening makes it stick. You could airbrush gold on it if you wanted to, or you could brush it with um, your luster dust combined with some Everclear or some vodka or some lemon extract if you prefer, but I think I get just a, a nicer coating when I do it that way. Now I rolled out some more red fondant, and or some red fondant. We're just starting with this red part. And I got it to a uniform thickness and I'm rolling it on my little dowel here. And brushing with some cornstarch so that it doesn't stick to itself. Now this is a transfer method or a rolling pin method. There's different words for it on how to panel the sides of a tall cake. If you do not want to put fondant on the top and try to smooth it down the sides because that can cause a lot of ripping. I like to do it this way. And then I'm just kind of smoothing down that front, that first edge so that there's not a big line of demarcation where the second piece rolls on top of it. Cause I wanted to have a torn ragged edge on this fondant. So I'm literally just using my fingers and just tearing it. I wanted this to have some texture on there and I didn't want to have a just a straight cut line. You could do that if you want to. If you wanted your ruffled parts to be the only part that has that torn edge to it, you can do that too. And I'm just eyeballing a round piece for the top to cover the top. You could take the pan of the same size of the cake that you're using in this and use that as a guide on where to cut your fondant if you like. If you want to be a little bit more precise about it, I'm just, you know, over the years have kind of just figured out how to do the little shortcuts and that works for me, but you can do it that way if you want. And here I'm rolling out the fondant kind of fairly thin because I don't want these ruffles to kind of take over the cake. I want them to accent it. And I'm rolling it out and then I'm getting the um, straight bottoms to them so they fit against the bottom of the cake and just cutting out kind of amoeba shaped pieces. They don't need to be really neat and precise. In fact, it's better if they're not. And I'm using my steamer to steam the fondant so that it's a little sticky and will get the second piece of fondant to stick. You could brush it with water if you want to. You could even use shortening. But this time I wanted to use the steamer. I'm going to use the steamer for my wafer paper accents anyways. So I'm just using it to adhere the fondant to this main piece of the cake. And again, just ripping those edges and just kind of letting them fall over and curl a little bit because I'm going to add some gold to those edges. I did not have a plan on where I was going to place these pieces ahead of time. I just kind of let it happen the way it wants to happen. You can draw it out if you want to. I mean, I kind of had a rough idea how I wanted the front to look, but the rest of it I just kind of went with it as I went. Now I'm just steaming the entire thing just so I can get all that cornstarch off of there. Now to make these wafer paper accents, I am just cutting down my wafer paper. I did some square pieces or rectangle pieces and I also did some triangle pieces. And I'm letting the steam from my steamer soften that wafer paper just enough so that I can pleat it. You don't want to leave them in that steam for too long because it can kind of curl too much. Unless that's the look you're going for, then that's just fine. And I'm just kind of folding it against itself and the steam will make it stick to itself.
And now I'm gonna let those cool, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that top piece on the bottom cake. I just stuck them together with a little buttercream. Now I'm gonna use the actual paint, the gold paint this time, to accent those ruffled edges, the, or the torn edges. It's just, like I said earlier, just some gold luster dust that I will, I will add a link down in the description below on the kind I like, and some Everclear, and I just thin it out just enough so that it can be used as a paint. And I'm just touching those edges with the brush. And I'm gonna do that on all those edges. To get the wafer paper accents to stick, I just use a little piping gel. And then I added a gold sphere with a skewer stuck in the back in the middle to tie those pieces together. And then I'm using some more of the gold spheres and some of those dragees just here and there to add some accents. And again, attaching those with piping gel. And guys, if you do not want to use the wafer paper, you can go ahead and just substitute out some more of those gold spheres like I did on the left side. Whatever look you prefer. Typically, I wouldn't put the white with the gold and the red, but for Christmas, I thought it might work. But really, you could do it either way you like or with any color combination that you like. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to Check out my other social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.